Hey guys, this is Mr. Millings, and in this video, we are going to learn how to do some mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problems. So what the heck is stoichiometry, and how does stoichiometry work? Well, it says right here that stoichiometry is the section of chemistry that involves using the relationships between reactants and products to determine how much of another reactant or product will be needed or produced. In Greek, the term stoichion means element and metron means measure, measure. So literally, stoichiometry means the measurement of elements. So in stoichiometry, what we're trying to do is we are trying to use the relationships that we see in a chemical equation to determine how much of something else in that chemical equation will either be needed or will be produced. Okay, and so when we're working on stoichiometry problems, there's all kinds of different types of stoichiometry problems. There are mass to moles types of problems. There are volume to grams types of problems. There are particles to particles types of problems and uh, several other different types of stoichiometry problems. And so if you just take a, a few moments to familiarize yourself with this little flow chart here, then stoichiometry should be fairly simple for us, okay? So this little chart will be your lifeline throughout this entire unit of stoichiometry. And so uh, I would have this out in front of you and, uh, and ready to go. In fact, what I would do is I would pause this video at this juncture in time and open it up in a separate tab. So that way you have this right here as we start working on some stoichiometry problems. Okay, so stoichiometry, once again, is the process, uh, the mathematical process of figuring out how much of something is produced or how much of something is going to be needed in a chemical reaction based on the quantities of something else. For example, let's take a look at this little uh, example right here. It says if 35 grams of hydrochloric acid reacts with 50 grams of sodium hydroxide, then how many grams of sodium chloride will form? So in this little question right here, we have, uh, we, we have a lot going on, and it's all based off of this chemical equation that we see right here. Hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide to produce uh, sodium chloride and water and in this problem here what this is asking is if you have 35 grams of this stuff if you have 35 grams of this stuff right here and you have 50 grams of this stuff right here then how many grams of this stuff will be produced so there's a couple different ways that we can figure this answer out we can go into the laboratory and we can measure out 35 grams of hydrochloric acid and we can measure out 50 grams of sodium hydroxide using a scale we can perform the chemical reaction and then we can boil off the water and then we can measure out the amount of of sodium chloride that was produced on a on a scale as well and that will give us an answer and that's called the actual yield or we can calculate what is called a theoretical yield using a process called stoichiometry. We can use a mathematical process to figure out how much table salt will be produced if we react 35 grams of hydrochloric acid with 50 grams of sodium hydroxide. And this little flow chart right here uh, just helps us and aids us in doing this type of problem. For example, uh, the two known substances are in grams and the unknown substance we want to figure out is in grams over here. So we'd have to run this process through this little flow chart and an answer would spit out over here. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the steps that are involved in stoichiometry and then let's apply this flow chart to several different types of examples. Okay, so what we're looking at right here is just a few steps when you want to perform mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problems. When you, uh, the known quantity is expressed in moles and the unknown quantity you want to express in moles. Here are a few steps that you should follow. I would pause this. I would open up in a separate tab again and use these steps to, to work on the example problems that we're going to do. However, it says step one here is to correctly write and balance the chemical equation. Then we're going to determine the known quantity. And then we're simply going to multiply by the mole ratio. And then we're going to provide our answer using the correct number of sig figs. And then we're going to attach the correct unit to our answer. So here are some basic steps that you can use when doing these types of problems. So now let's use this little flow chart and let's use this, uh, uh, these steps right here to solve several different types of problems.
Okay, in this first example, it says how many moles of sodium chloride can be produced from 3.2 moles of sodium and an excess of Cl2 gas? Okay, so if we read this question, we have a chemical reaction right here. Sodium is reacting with chlorine gas to produce table salt or sodium chloride. And in this problem here, it says that we have 3.2 moles of this stuff here and that we have an excess. An excess just means that we have a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff that's not going to run out. And so what we want to figure out is how many moles of this stuff here will be produced if 3.2 moles of sodium reacts with an excess of chlorine. How many moles of this stuff will be produced? All right, so the first thing that we have to do when we work on stoichiometry problems is to balance our chemical equation. And we learn how to balance chemical equations in another video. And if you forgot, you can go ahead and click that little card that just appeared in the top right corner and, and review that video and uh, understand how to, to balance a chemical equation. But essentially, we have two chlorines on the left. Now we have two chlorines on the right. We have two sodiums over here. And now we have two sodiums over here. So our chemical equation is now balanced. Now what we need to do is start with our, uh, our known quantity. In this problem here, we have 3.2 moles of sodium. So that's the starting stuff. And next thing we're going to do here is using our balanced chemical equation, we're going to come up with a mole ratio. The mole ratio consists of two parts. The known quantity is going to go on the bottom of our mole ratio. So the known quantity will go on the bottom. And the stuff that we're trying to find or the unknown quantity will go on top. So what do we mean by that? Well, in our mole ratio right here, we're making a comparison between two things. We're comparing the stuff that we're trying to find to the stuff that's given to us or the known quantity. So if we take a look at our balanced chemical equation, what this is telling us is that for every two moles of NaCl that are produced, you're going to need two moles of sodium over here on the reactant side. So our mole ratio here will be two moles of NaCl. over two moles of Na. And now take a look at what happens. This unit on top is going to cancel with this unit on the bottom. And so when we take 3.2 times 2 over 2, you guessed it, we will end up with 3.2 moles of NaCl. Okay, so if we have two moles of sodium reacting in this chemical equation with an excess of chlorine, it's going to produce 3.2 moles of sodium chloride. Let's take a look at another one. All right, in this second example, it says if 0.75 moles of aluminum reacts with an excess of iron 2 oxide, then how many moles of aluminum oxide will be produced? So first thing that we have to do is balance our chemical equation. And we have two uh, aluminums here. We're going to have three uh, iron 2 oxides. We're going to have one aluminum oxide, and we're going to have three irons over here. Okay, so if we read this question, it says we have 0 0.75 moles of aluminum. And what we're trying to figure out is we want to figure out how many moles of aluminum oxide will be produced if we have an excess of this stuff reacting with 0 0.75 moles of aluminum. So the starting quantity here, after we're done balancing the chemical equation, our starting qu quantity is 0 0.75 moles of aluminum. And what we're trying to figure out here is we want to figure out how many moles of this stuff will be produced. So we have to multiply the starting quantity by the mole ratio if we take a look right here at our little flow chart. And so our, our, uh, our mole ratio here is going to be the stuff that we're trying to find or the unknown quantity on top. And if we take a look, we have one mole of Al2O3. There's an imaginary one here. So one mole of Al2O3 to two moles of aluminum on the bottom. The known quantity will always go on the bottom of your uh, on the bottom of your mole ratio. All right, so we get our calculator out now, and what we'll end up with is 0 0.38. 0 0.38 what? These two units cancel out, leaving us with moles of Al2O3. So in this problem here, if we have 
0.75 moles of aluminum reacting with an excess of this stuff, it's going to end up producing 0.38 moles of aluminum oxide. Let's take a look at another example. All right, in example three here, let's read this. It says in the reaction below, if 1.3 times 10 to the negative third moles of sulfuric acid reacts with an unlimited amount of aluminum hydroxide, then how many moles of water will form? So if we read this question here, it looks like we're starting off with 1.3 times 10 to the negative third moles of sulfuric acid. That's this stuff right here. So we have 1.3 times 10 to the negative three moles of this stuff here. And what we want to figure out is if this stuff reacts with an excess amount of this stuff right here, then how many moles of water will be produced? We want to figure out the amount of moles of water that will be produced. So the very first thing that we're going to have to do is balance our chemical equation. So let's go ahead and do that. And it looks like we're going to end up with a 2 here, a 3 here, a 1 here, and a 6 here. So our chemical equation is now balanced and so the starting quantity or the known quantity is going to be 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of H2SO4. And so what will our mole ratio be in this problem here? The mole ratio consists of two things, the stuff that you're trying to find compared to the stuff that's given. So if we take a look, we have six moles of water. That will go on top. And we have three moles of H2SO4. So when we get our calculator out and take 1.3 times 10 to the negative third times six divided by three, we will end up with 2.6 times 10 to the negative third. Let's see what unit moles of H2SO4 on bottom and top are gonna to cancel out, leaving us with moles of water, which is what we were trying to find. So in this problem right here, if we have 1.3 times 10 to the negative third moles of sulfuric acid reacting with an excess of aluminum hydroxide, it's going to end up producing 2.6 times 10 to the negative third moles of water. Let's take a look at another example. All right, in this fourth example, it says, how many moles of carbon will be produced from 4.5 moles of C10H16 and an excess of chlorine gas? So in this problem here, if we read it carefully, we have 4.5 moles of this stuff right here. So we have 4.5 moles of this stuff right here, reacting with an excess of this stuff right here. And we are trying to figure out how many moles of carbon will be produced. So first thing we have to do is balance our chemical equation. And so we'll end up with an eight there, a 10 here, and a 16 in front of this one right here. So there's our balanced chemical equation. Now, if we look, we're starting off with 4.5 moles of C10 H16 and what we want to do is we want to figure out how many moles of just carbon will end up being produced so what is our mole ratio going to be here remember the mole ratio you're comparing two things you're comparing the stuff that you're trying to find to the given stuff the tough the stuff that you're trying to find is this right here and it looks like we have 10 moles of carbon in our balanced chemical equation here so 10 moles of carbon to one mole of C10H16. If we take a look at our balanced chemical equation, there's an imaginary one there. So when we do the math here, we can see we're going to end up with 45 moles of carbon. This unit will cancel out with this unit, leaving us with moles of carbon as our unit of measurement. So in this balanced chemical equation or in this reaction right here, if you have 4.5 moles of this, Reacting with an excess of this, it's going to end up producing 45 moles of carbon. Let's take a look at one final example. This example, it says if 7.8 moles of propane reacts with an unlimited quantity of oxygen gas, then how many moles of carbon dioxide will be produced? So in this problem, we have 7.8 moles of propane. Which one of these is propane? Well, this is water. This is carbon dioxide. This is oxygen. So this must be propane right here. And we learned how to name hydrocarbons in an earlier video. So we have 7.8 moles of propane reacting with an excess amount of oxygen here. And what we want to figure out is we want to figure out how many moles of just the carbon dioxide will be produced here. So the first thing that we always do with the stoichiometry problem is we're going to balance our chemical equation 
So our chemical equation is now balanced. What's the starting stuff? We're in it, well, we're starting up with 7.8 moles of C3H8 or propane. And in this problem here, we're trying to figure out how many moles of carbon dioxide will be produced. So what will our mole ratio be here? Remember, the mole ratio consists of two things. The stuff that you're trying to find to the stuff that is given. All right, so we're comparing the stuff that we're trying to find to the given stuff right here. We can see in our balanced chemical equation that there are three moles of carbon dioxide to one mole of C3H8. And when we put this in our calculator, it looks like we are going to end up with 23.4. 23.4 what? Well, moles of propane on top and bottom will cancel out, leaving you with moles of carbon dioxide. So in this problem right here, if you have 7.8 moles of propane reacting with an excess of oxygen, it's going to end up producing 23.4 moles of carbon dioxide. All right, so try your own. I would take a few moments to pause this video. Go ahead and try some of these on your own, if not all of these. In these problems here, it says you have 0.25 moles of the reactant listed first. So you have 0.25 moles of this, of this, of this, of this stuff here, of this stuff here, of this stuff here, and of this stuff here. And you are asked to figure out how many moles of the product listed first will be produced. So you're trying to find this, 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 and this. So what I would do once again is pause this video and I'm going to give you guys the answers to these in three, two, one. And here you go. Here are the answers to these. Here are the balanced chemical equations and here are the answers. So how did you do? If you got them all right, then you're pretty good at doing some mole to mole stoichiometry problems. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or uh, questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.